In this video, let's convert our Feed Aspen game to a shooter game. Hey guys, John Elder here from CodyBee.com. And in the last few videos, we've been building out this Feed Aspen game where Aspen can go into the game field and eat the bowls of food. In this video, we want to convert our game to a shooter game. So Aspen stays down at the bottom of the screen and shoots bones into the game field, trying to destroy the different foods. So in this video, we'll modify our game a little bit and add the ability for Aspen to shoot bones. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Pi Game series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file. This is just the file from the last video we worked on. I renamed it aspen underscore shoot dot pi. It was aspen underscore collide nine dot pi, I think, in the last video. And let's just very quickly run this just to see where we're at. So let's head back over here. I'm in my C slash games directory and let's run Python aspen underscore shoot dot pi. And when we do, we've got this game. So we can come here and when we hit the blue, we die. When we hit the red, we score, but we can move around. So the first thing we want to do is let's modify Aspen so she can only move back and forth like this and she can't even go up even if she wants to. So let's head back over to our code and let's scroll down here to the bottom where we've got our, let's see, move function in our Aspen class, right? And here we're getting the key pressed and we're going left and right and up and down. And I could just kind of comment out the up and down with three single quotation marks. We can close that and that should do the trick. So let's go ahead and save this. Super easy, head back over here, run this again, just to make sure this is working. And I'm pressing up and down and nothing has happened. If I press left and right, you can see Aspen can go from left to right. So, all right, so far so good. Let me pull up a file explorer and I've created this little bone image. It's just a very basic little bone. It's even kind of hard to see. If we zoom in a lot, you can kind of make it out. It's a bone, <laughs> zoom back down. It's just a very little bone. This is what we want to shoot out of Aspen. I figured we could do laser beams, but that's not very fun. We want to stick with the dog theme here. So we've got this little bone. You can download this from my GitHub repository or use any image in the world that you want. Uh, but that's what we're going to be using it. I've saved it in my images directory in our C slash games directory. And the games directory obviously is where we're saving our file. So what do we want to do here? Well, we're going to need a new class to deal with our bones. So let's just go ahead and create that real quick. So let's see, where do we want this? We've got our Aspen class, maybe, I don't know, right underneath it, let's create our Aspen bone class. So let's call this a class and let's just call this Aspen bone. And this is gonna inherit pygame.sprite.sprite. Now inside of here, we're gonna need to initialize this class. So let's define underscore underscore init underscore underscore and we need to pass in a few things obviously self we need to pass in an x coordinate a y coordinate and a bone underscore group so the bone group is going to handle the image of the bone we'll create that in just a second and then let's go ahead and do our super as always underscore underscore init underscore underscore first let's uh, sort of define our image and this is going to be self.image and let's set that equal to a pygame dot image dot load. And we want to load. It's in our images directory. And the name of that bone file that I showed you was bone.png. All right, that's good. Now we need to create a rect for it, of course. So let's go self dot rect. And that's going to equal self dot image dot get underscore rect. We've done all these things before. Now we also need those uh, X and Y coordinates. And that's just going to be self dot. Uh, let's go rect dot center x. We want to put it right in the center of Aspen. And that's, we could just pass in that x coordinate that we're creating right here. And we also want to go self dot rect dot. Let's go center y. And we can also pass that y coordinate. Uh, we also need a velocity of moving bone. So, Whenever we shoot the bone, we want it to shoot up straight and we want to have a certain velocity. So let's go self dot velocity and let's set that equal to like 10. And that looks good. Finally, we need 
to add this thing. So let's go uh, bone underscore group dot add, and we want to pass in self. So we'll deal with this bone group in just a minute. Now we also probably need to create, let's define an update function, right? So we want to pass in self here. And this is just going to move the bone as we shoot it up, right? So, uh, you know, we want to move the bone after shooting it. So let's go self dot, this is going to be rect dot y. And what we want to do is have it go up. So that's, so that's negative equal. And then whatever the self dot velocity is. Okay, that looks pretty good. We need to add our bone group that we haven't created yet to our Aspen class or player class, right? So uh, let's see, come down here. When we create our Aspen class, we're passing a self, an X, and a Y. We also need to pass a bone group. Like I said, we'll create that in just a second. Let's come down here and define the bone group thing. So let's just go self dot bone group, and we'll have that equal to bone group. Uh, all right, that looks good. Now, what is this bone group? We need to create that. So let's come down here to where we have all of our groups. So here's our food group. Here's our Aspen group. And also here's where we're initializing our Aspen function. We're passing an X and a Y coordinate. We also need to pass that bone group, right? So we don't have a bone group yet. So let's come up here and let's create bone group. And this is just going to be bone underscore group. And we'll set that equal to a pie game dot sprite dot group. I want to spell group right. There we go. And that's just like our food group, right? And our Aspen group. Same deal. But now it's a bone group. So, all right, we've created a sprite group called bone group. We're passing that into our Aspen function. When we call our Aspen function, uh, let's see, let's come up here. We're passing that bone group in and defining it. And then we've got our Aspen bone class that is also taking the bone group. That looks good. But now we need to add our bone group to our screen. So let's come down here to the very bottom and we want to draw and move food and Aspen Sprite and bone group. So let's see. Down here, maybe let's just go bone group dot update and bone underscore group dot draw to the screen. Okay, so that's good. We've sort of defined all these things, but we're not actually firing. We haven't created a function to fire the bone from Aspen, right? So we definitely need to do that. So let's head back up here to our Aspen group and here we are, we're passing the bone group in. So somewhere in here, let's fire the bones. <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> Shooting bones from a dog. I, dogs like bones, they don't throw bones. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, let's create a function, let's define, and let's just call it fire. We want to pass in self, we want to fire the bone or shoot the bone or whatever you want to call it. And so let's fire the bone. And so that's just going to be our Aspen underscore bone class. This is where we're finally initializing that bone class down here, right? There it is. And what do we want to do? Well, we need to pass a few things, right? So we need to first pass an X. Well, let's just go look and see. Just to refresh our members, we need an X coordinate, a Y coordinate, and the bone group. So let's go for the X coordinate. That's just going to be whatever Aspen's coordinates are, right? Because we want. We want the bone to come out of like the top of her head, right? We don't want her to be over here and then the, the shooting bone thing to come up over here. We want it to come out where she is, right? So that's going to be our X and Y coordinates of Aspen. So we can call self.rect.center X for the X coordinate. We want self.rect. Let's say the top. We want the top of her head to shoot out from the top, right? And then also we want to pass in that bone group. That's just going to be self bone underscore group that we defined right here that we passed in right here that we created down here. Okay. So I think that's just about everything. Let's go ahead and 
save this and run it see if we messed something up we probably did because man we went through that really fast all right so we move back and forth if i hit the space bar nothing happens we have gotten to add the space bar thing right so okay we need a some sort of key to press in order to actually call that fire function right so i want to use the space key i think that makes sense but you can use any key so let's come down here to our game loop and here's where our events are happening and this is going to be an event we're going to be pressing down the space button space bar whatever that's a key down event i guess you would call it so uh let's go see inside of our for loop we want to fire the bone with space bar so let's go if event dot type equals pygame dot key down that means we've pressed the key down on the keyboard, right? Now we also need another if statement to say which key is pressed, right? So let's go if event dot key equals pygame dot k underscore space. So k stands for the key. Which key are we pressing? The space key, right? So what happens when that happens? Well, we want to call the aspen dot fire method. Right, so that aspen.fire method is going to be the fire method right here in our aspen class that we just created, which will then create a bone, set it straight out the middle of aspen's center top of her head, and it's going to shoot out a bone. So, okay, that looks good. So many moving parts to this, but not that complicated. So, okay, let's run this guy again, come back over here, and boom. <laughs> Maybe you want a little, uh, you know, sound effect when these things shoot out. I'm just going to leave it for now. We can add that later if we want. We already know how to do sound effects from earlier videos. But all right, man, these are shooting out. So I'm just like cranking out the space button and these are just flying around. Maybe we want that. And I think I do because I like all this chaos of lots of things shooting around. But if you wanted to like only shoot one at a time or something or two at a time or three at a time or whatever, we could put some restrictions here. We know that the bone group, we can find the length of it. So let's just do an if statement. So let's go if the length of our self dot bone group is what, say less than two. So that would only allow us to shoot two bones at once. So if we save this and run it, we can go boom, boom. Now I'm pressing the space key again and nothing's happened because those things are still shooting. They're off the screen, but they've still been shot already. So we've only allowed two at a time. Um, I don't like that anyway, so I'm gonna take that off. I just kinda wanted to show you that very quickly in case you wanted to restrict it. You could then have to run some logic to you know, destroy the bone group after it passed this probably blue bar, blue bar up here and you'd use coordinates for that. Maybe we'll get into that later. But for now, I'm gonna take that off because I like shooting lots and lots of things. So <laughs> let's comment this out. I'll leave it in here in case you wanted to, to do that. Uh, let's say, uh, I don't know, uh, restrict number of shots fired. Uh, let's take that and move this down. There we go. Fire the bone. <laughs> right. Okay. So I think we'll stop here. We did a lot in this video. We've got Aspen firing bones up into the game field. They don't do anything yet. We have to write some logic probably in the next video to collide them with the food and do something, kill the food or bounce off the food or whatever we decide to actually do. Uh, but we are coming right along. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership plus access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Doing over 190,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.